Hi! Thanks for stopping by my channel. Today I'm going to give you the 411 on the Ninja Foodie Possible Cooker Pro. And that just means I'm going to tell you some things that you need to know but you may have never even thought to ask. But first, I thought we should get to know the Pro a little better. So here's a little tour. This is your base. It is made of aluminum, so for most people, it should be very light and easy to carry. This is your inner pot. It is removable and can be used in your oven for up to 500 degrees, but it's not for use on the stovetop. This is your lid. It is made of glass and it is not oven safe. This is your spoon. It sits on the built-in spoon rest and the spoon is also not oven safe. This is your steam and roast rack. Now, if this steam and roast rack did not come with your unit at the time of purchase, it is worth the additional purchase. Now, you can find um, racks that will fit the Ninja Foodie Pro, but none of them, at least none of them that I was able to find had these handles or had handles. And handles are so convenient for lifting your food out of the Pro once it's done. So it, it is definitely worth the additional purchase to go ahead and purchase this from Ninja. And I got mine for less than $25 with tax and everything included. So it's definitely worth the purchase. Now, you may have also noticed in the marketplace that Ninja offers two other models of this unit. And you may be wondering, okay, what is the difference, Heather? So the first thing you need to know is that this pro model offers eight cooking functions. Those eight cooking functions are slow cook, braise, sear and saute, steam, sous vide, bake, proof, and keep warm. Now, the possible cooker offers all the features that this Pro model offers, with the exception of sous vide and proof. The Plus model offers all the features that the Pro model offers, with the exception of steam and bake. Now, of course, there's also another difference, and that's price. So, at the time of this recording, the best price that I was able to come across for this Pro model was $149.95 on Amazon. The best price I was able to find for the Plus model was also on Amazon, and that was $119.99. The best price for the possible cooker model was $119 at Walmart. So it's definitely worth, um, if, you're, if you're interested in purchasing, it's definitely worth doing a little price comparison um, shopping so that you can get the best deal. Now, Ninja claims that their cooker cooks 30% faster than other multi-cookers on the market. And I've got to tell you from my experience, that's not hyperbole. It's actually true. Because, for example, I cooked a pumpkin chili in my Pro that in a crock pot, just using that brand as an example, it's a fine brand, and it's a brand that most people know, so it's a good example, I thought. Um, in the crock pot, my pumpkin chili on high takes seven to eight hours. I'm sorry, on low takes seven to eight hours. On high, it takes three to four. 
when I cooked that pumpkin chili in my pro on high, it was done in an hour and a half. So if you have recipes that you have perfected in another cooker, take the time to adapt them to the Ninja Foodie Pro or whichever model you decide on purchasing, whether it's the Possible Cooker or the uh, Cooker Possible Cooker Plus. Take the time to adapt them so that you can take advantage of the speed in which the Ninja operates. Because if I had just said, okay, well, it usually takes four hours on high and left my chili in my pro for four hours, I shudder to think what it looked like. So just keep that in mind. Definitely take the time to adapt. Okay. So another question that often comes up is, okay, to lid or not to lid? When do I use this lid? Do I have to use this lid? These are, these are questions that um, I've got a lot from people. So when you are using sear and saute, you can use it with the lid or without the lid. But for every other function, use the lid. Okay. Another question that I've got a lot are, Heather, what's the difference between slow cook and braise? And here's the skinny on it. While they're very similar, um, typically when you slow cook, you're going to use a lot more liquid than you would if you were braising. In fact, when you slow cook, your food literally can be submerged in liquid and simmer in it for hours because that's how slow cookers work. They cook your food by simmering. Whereas when you braise, you don't want to submerge your food at all. In fact, you're only going to fill your cooker one third full with liquid and you're not going to cover your food with the liquid. You're going to pour your liquid down the sides of the food. And typically to achieve a braise, your food needs to reach 210 degrees Fahrenheit for at least an hour. That's what breaks down the sinewy fibers and tough connective uh, tissue, collagen, and fat that results in just a tender fall off the bone uh, protein. Whereas when you slow cook, oftentimes your slow cook temperatures are going to be higher than 210 degrees Fahrenheit. And you literally can slow cook um, a protein or food for hours and not achieve uh, the tenderness uh, and the fall off the bone qualities that you can with a braise. Um, because oftentimes um, certain foods, if you, if you slow cook them, they'll actually become tougher. So keep that in mind. Um, Basically, you want to slow cook foods that um, really benefit from being simmered, like your sauces, uh, chilies, um, chowders, things of that nature. Okay. Another question I get a lot is, what is the sous vide function and how do I use it? So, sous vide literally means in French in a vacuum. Okay, so it's the process of cooking back food in a vacuum. Basically, you're going to vacuum seal your whatever you want to cook, and then you're going to fill this cooker, and there's a line in the inside of your inner pot. Let's see if I can show you that here. Um, that's literally marked sous vide. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to get a 
It's literally marked CV. You might not be able to see it, but trust me, it's there. It's literally marked sous vide and you just fill it with water and then you pop your bag in, set your time, and let the cooker do the work. Now, you may disagree with me, plenty of people have, but it's been my experience for the best results you want to actually vacuum seal your food. Don't just put it in a plastic bag and stick it in the cooker. Now you can do that. There are people, like I said, they've disagreed with me and they said, I either I've done it and it was fine. But I'm just telling you from my experience, all plastic bags are not created equal. And I've had plenty of them um, lose their seal during the cooking process and your food is just a mess. So if you own, and many people do, if you own a food saver or, or other uh, product that vacuum seals, it's worth a while to use it and vacuum seal your product to ensure that it's not going to come, it's not going to lose its seal during the cooking process. Now, if you don't own a vacuum sealer and you're like, Heather, I am not going to spend, you know, another dollar. Um, so I'm going to use my little plastic bag. Don't. Because you know what? You can go to Walmart and at least in my local Walmart, they sell um, vacuum bags. It's like for $4.95. And trust me, it's worth it for the cost of food take the time to do it right and it's like sous vide it's in the name in a vacuum so take the time to vacuum seal your food and you'll have excellent um, results every time now another important thing you need to know about sous vide is that sous vide is not the end of the cooking process after your sous vide cycle is finished you want to take your food out of the bag and you want to finish it with a dry heat. What do I mean by that? I mean, you want to sear and saute it maybe in this very unit. Or if you've got a Ninja Foodie, you want to grill it. Or maybe you want to bake it. Okay. But you want to sear it and you want to brown it and get that nice finishing crispness, especially for like um, steak or, or chicken roast or anything like that. So, Finish it off with dry heat, and trust me, you will not be disappointed. It's fabulous. That brings me to another important point, an important step that will ensure that your food just tastes the very best that it could be. You want to brown your food um, before you cook it, and it doesn't matter whatever mode you choose. Definitely take the time to season it and brown it. It's just another way that the um, basically flavor is just it's like having a flavor attack for your food if you just take the time to brown it first you will not be disappointed so here's another important thing that you need to know the bake function on the cooker was really designed for food with a high liquid or water content. And what do I mean by that? I mean like your casseroles, um, cobblers, things of that nature. So if you want to bake something like uh, you want to bake a whole chicken or a meatloaf um, or bread even because you can proof in here, um, what you want to do is you want to either place your food in a baking dish and then place it inside of the inner pot or you want to rack it using the steam and roast rack um, and then place it in the inner pot because you don't want your food um, like I said unless it's a casserole or or something that has a lot of water base or liquid base um, you don't want to place um, your 
uh, food directly on the inner pot because the bottom of your roast meatloaf or bread will burn. Okay, so just remember that if you're not doing a casserole or something that has um, a high liquid content um, using the baking function, you want to either use a baking dish or rack it before putting it into the inner pot. Okay, so that's it. That's the 411 on the Ninja Foodie Possible Cooker Pro. I hope that you found this information helpful. And if you did, please like and subscribe and ring the bell so you can be notified uh, when my next video drops. And if you have questions or there's uh, other things that you'd like me to cover, also put that in your comments. I really appreciate it. And again, thanks for uh, stopping by and checking out the channel.